Thank you, Ms. Kaplan. Um, please introduce yourself for those listening in and tell us your thoughts. Hello, it is a pleasure to be here this morning, and I thank the council for you know, giving you know, Barrios Unidos and myself an opportunity to bring some young people here to represent you know, other young people in our communities, whether it's you know, Montgomery County or Fairfax County, because a lot of our young people are going through the same issues of, of vulnerability, of, of feeling isolated, of, of, of needing agencies, families, and, and, and communities to foster an environment of hope for our young people. And sometimes, you know, we as adults make the mistake of thinking that gang members are hopeless. And that is the biggest mistake we could make as a society. The hope, because of poverty and because of the issues that you mentioned, has just been obscured. And it's up to people like us, and it's up to people in the community to build these partnerships of, of love, of understanding, of nurturing, of giving our young people a uh, structure that will make the change in our communities, building alternatives. Sometimes we as adults make the mistake of thinking that by giving a young person a pamphlet that says, join a gang, you lose. Here, buddy, see you next week. That is going to be enough. It is not enough. We need to provide those young people that love. Go, you know, when do we go think, think about going out there and giving a gang member a hug, regardless of what we have been conditioned to think a gang member has to look like through the media? There are two things that I would like to emphasize um, that the county could, this county could do to, to help our young people. And that is holistic, uh, truthful, re-education to the general population of what this issue is all about. Right now, if you look and read at newspaper articles or you hear news in, 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 in the TV, what do you always find connected to the word gang? Either the word Latino or the word Hispanic. And if you don't have those two words, you have Spanish names of the gangs. So automatically, the general population has an understanding that the Latino community, they think, is the cause of the gang problem, when in actuality, the gang problem is the effect of ineffective communities, whether it's you know, not having redirected the services to the people that need it most, or whether it's you know, our county agencies spreading and extending their walls to go to the communities that are vulnerable to help our young people. You know, I hear the uh, a lot of messages from a lot of folks in county that, you know, a gang member really wants, they have to really, really want it before I could help them, right? The probability of a gang member coming to your door and say, hey, guys, can you save my life? Let me walk to your teen center or wherever it is. Can you save me? It's 0, 0.0 to almost 0, 0.0. So we as a nation, as a community agency need to pump up that probability and go to where they are, go to their communities, seek them out, let them know that there is opportunities, you know? Right now, like I said, the thing with the media, nine out of 10 Latino gang, blah, blah, blah. Right now, if you would see me out in the street right now, to the general population, I'm a gang member, right? Let me take this off. I'm not strip teasing, hold on. <laughs> Don't get nervous. I was going to yeah. talk to you about that. Yeah. Okay, I know. I know. That raises a lot of issues. Because Diego, can you get a Red Sox cap oh. for your next <laughs> uh, presentation? Because of my past and the record of negativity that I built for myself in a, a long time ago, people still look at me like I'm some worthless gang member. But I'm not. Okay. And the reason I am not that person who built a record of negativity when I was young is because agencies, just like Identity and Baris Unidos, looked at me like a human being. They didn't look at me as a young person who's supposed to be squashed or deported or prosecuted or incarcerated to make a point. Now, right now, there is an environment of hopelessness within the people that are making the bills in our community. There's, there's uh, bills out there like the gang buster bill who says that if my friend Willie here gets in trouble and I go out there and kill somebody, he goes to jail automatically for 10 years, even though he's a juvenile, he didn't commit the crime, just by the crime of association. So it doesn't matter how many prevention, you could have 300 prevention programs out there, but if we're making bills that will make it impossible for young people like this to get the prevention initiative, then we're setting up an environment and a situation for failure in our young people. The other thing, accountability, responsibility. I was at a county agency in Fairf county meeting in Fairfax County where folks from, a, from the Department of Justice taught the community a very important statistic. In a gang, in a youth gang, 
Only 3% of those people in that gang will never change. You could give them education, exposure, accountability, mentorship, whatever. Never going to change. That logically means that how many will change if you give them options, if you give them alternative, if you give them our love. 97%. Big chunk, right? So here's the disconnect between the people who are making decisions and channeling the monies to our communities. How much do you think is actually going to prevention and intervention in our community, in our counties, in our states, in the United States? Minimal. Most of it is going to, to suppression, to deportation, to hire more prosecutors, to make more gang, gang units, to make, more, uh, to make the laws even bigger, to get patrol cars, to get computer database information, to keep records of names. But the people that need the help are not seeing it. We as a community have think three things that impede us from doing the right thing. Number one is denial. We as a county right here in Montgomery don't have that problem anymore. That's why you're here. You want to learn. You want to give young people opportunities. Number two, it is overreaction. It is this overreaction that's making it very terrible for our young people to get services in the community. Um, <coughs> I know that very, a lot of counties have a lot of prevention programs, but what we need to make sure of is that are the vulnerable people who are going through these issues of gang, prevent, gang victimization, you know, get, gang uh, self-victimization that our young people are going through, really having access to all these programs. The county, I've been in this county, you guys have beautiful recreation centers with basketball, with football, with all these beautiful things. But are the people who are suffering in our communities being welcome to those centers? Are they coming? In, in the masses that need to come to those centers, and are those centers really being supported? Intervention. Again, we need to go out there and give those gang members a hug, give them opportunities, or else they won't come to our door. So that was number two, overreaction, right? If we see our young people as threats, and of people that need to be deported, we will not make a difference. We need to foster that, that, that sense of, of hope in all young people. Number three is inaction. I want this council to hopefully build wisdom with the information that the county has provided you and the, and, the, and the information and the data that you're gathering right now. But not only wisdom, we need to make, have utility to make viable alternatives for our young people, okay? The last thing that we need to do as a community is come back again in six months and restudy the issue and then come again five years from now and let's restudy the issue, and then let's do it again 10 years ago, 10 years from now, to restudy the issue. Learn from the things that California has done, what they have been through. Learn from the things that Northern Virginia and Fairfax has gone through. Learn from them, and let's not stop reinventing the wheel. Because as we go around, our young people are still living in poverty, in hopeless you know, situations, and we as a community need to go out there and spread our love and our opportunities to our young people. Oh, and by the way, I'm studying to be a medical doctor at George Mason University. Mm -hmm. That's great. Great. Thank you. Thank you very much.